All right. So jumping right into your personalized deep dive today, mm -hmm. this one, um, you sent in a lecture on inflammatory memory. Mm -hmm. It's by Professor Nagla Mwangi, and she's a dermatology expert from, I believe it's Kai University. Yeah. And honestly, preparing for this, I learned some pretty surprising things. Yeah. We're going to be uncovering how the body remembers inflammation. Right. Especially, we'll be focusing on chronic skin diseases. And this idea, I think, really challenges how we've traditionally thought about treating these conditions. I think what was so captivating about this video is the way Professor Mongi, you know, kind of expands our understanding of inflammatory memory. Yeah. It's not just about the immune system remembering, like you said, it's various cells throughout the body, including skin cells. Yeah, that's what I thought was so wild. Mm. Mm. It's not just like an on-off switch. It's like a, there's a whole history there. Yeah. So how does this memory actually work? Mm -hmm. Professor Mongi talked about the different players involved. And, you know, what surprised me, I guess, was that the innate immune system plays a role, not just the adaptive immune system. I always thought it was, you know, very specifically like, oh, T cells. Right, right. Yeah. And that's definitely involved the adaptive immune system and specifically T cells. But she really drives home that the innate immune cells like macrophages are also critical. Okay. And you can imagine these macrophages like sentinels that, that get trained uh -huh. by past inflammation. And this training involves, you know, changes in how they express certain receptors and produce these signaling molecules called cytokines. Yeah. So they essentially become more sensitive to future triggers. So it's like they're they're primed for like a faster, more aggressive response the next time around. Exactly. And this memory isn't just limited to immune cells. Right. The video highlights how epithelial stem cells, the ones responsible for, you know, regenerating your skin, right, can also be affected. Inflammation can induce what we call epigenetic changes in these stem cells, potentially making them more reactive. It's almost like the inflammation leaves a blueprint behind. Yeah. And it shapes how these cells function even after the initial trigger is gone. That's a great way to put it. And it gets even more fascinating when you consider that other cells like fibroblasts, which are involved in wound healing and tissue structure. Right. And even the endothelial cells, you know, lining your blood vessels might also have a role to play in inflammatory memory. That really expands the scope of how we think about inflammation, doesn't it? For sure. Yeah. It's not just this localized event, yeah. but something that can affect various cell types and have long term consequences. Exactly. And the video does a great job of illustrating these consequences by focusing on psoriasis as a case study. Oh, right. It's a common skin condition. I think a lot of people are familiar with it. Yeah. And it really highlights this multifaceted nature of inflammatory memory. You mentioned T cells earlier. And Professor Mongi explains how memory T cells can linger in the skin long after a psoriasis flare up, ready to react quickly if triggered again. Yes. And it's not just the, you know, T cells. Other immune cells like Langerhans cells and dendritic cells also remain primed for inflammation. They're like the the alarm system that's been set to high alert. So even when the visible signs of psoriasis fade, the skin itself remembers, mm -hmm. making it more vulnerable to future flare ups. That's a that's a pretty significant realization. Absolutely. And to understand how this remembering happens at a cellular level, we need to kind of delve into the world of epigenetics. Which Professor Mongi did a fantastic job of explaining. Yeah. It's a complex topic, but I thought her analogy of sticky notes on our DNA was brilliant. It's such a great analogy. Think of our DNA as like a vast library of instructions. These epigenetic marks are like adding little notes or flags to those instructions, changing how genes are read and ultimately how cells function. It's not about altering the underlying DNA sequence itself, but rather about modifying how that DNA is expressed. Right. So it's like changing the volume knob on certain genes. Yes. Turning some up and others down. Exactly. Based on past experiences with inflammation. That's a, that's a perfect way to visualize it. And these epigenetic changes are what underpin this phenomenon of inflammatory memory. That leads to like the really exciting possibility of developing new treatments. If we can target these epigenetic changes, Perhaps we could actually erase or reprogram the inflammatory memory, preventing future flare-ups. Exactly. Instead of just managing symptoms, we could potentially address the root cause. It's like a paradigm shift in how we think about treating chronic inflammatory diseases. Absolutely, yeah. And Professor Mongi's video highlighted how these epigenetic changes are not limited to psoriasis. Right. For example, she briefly touched on atopic dermatitis, which is more commonly known as eczema. Yeah, eczema. This is another chronic skin condition where inflammatory memory is thought to play a role. 
That makes me wonder if other skin conditions like acne might also be influenced by inflammatory memory. It's certainly a possibility worth investigating. I think, you know, as researchers delve deeper into this field, we're likely to uncover the role of inflammatory memory in a wider range of conditions. It's incredible to think that we're just like scratching the surface of understanding how inflammation shapes our health in such profound and lasting ways. It makes me wonder if this concept of inflammatory memory extends beyond just the skin. Could other organs have their own unique memories of inflammation as well? That's a that's a brilliant question, and you're right to wonder. Yeah. The research is, is still ongoing, but there's a growing body of evidence to suggest that inflammatory memory is a much broader phenomenon than we initially realized. Mm. In fact, it may be a key player in, in, in various chronic diseases throughout the body. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? If, if the skin can hold on to these inflammatory memories, what about other organs? Could they have their own unique ways of, you know, remembering? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like the video focused primarily on skin, but it seems like this concept could have much broader implications. Absolutely. Uh, researchers are starting to uncover evidence of inflammatory memory in various organs, including the heart and the gut. Oh, wow. OK, so let's unpack that. What's happening in the heart, for instance? Well, think about atherosclerosis, the buildup of plaque in the arteries. You know, it's a major contributor to heart disease, and research suggests that inflammatory memory may play a significant role in its development. So even if that initial trigger for inflammation is gone, right, the heart still carries that memory yeah, and is affected by it long term. Exactly. It's like a shadow of the past. Inflammation lingers, you know, influencing the heart's health down the road. And in the gut, you have conditions like inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, where the immune system essentially attacks the lining of the digestive tract. Oh, wow. Inflammatory memory is thought to contribute to the chronic nature of these conditions. That's that's pretty alarming. It seems like inflammatory memory could be a like a key player in a whole range of chronic diseases throughout the body. It's definitely a possibility worth investigating. And if we can understand how this memory works in different organs, it could lead to entirely new approaches to treatment. That brings me to my next question, which is, what are the current treatment strategies for chronic inflammatory diseases? Mm. And how might those strategies change if we take this inflammatory memory into account? Right. Right now, a lot of the treatments focus on suppressing the symptoms of inflammation, right. but they don't address the underlying memory. For example, you know, you might use corticosteroids to reduce inflammation in the short term, but they don't prevent future flare-ups. So it's like putting a Band-Aid on the problem instead of actually solving it. Precisely. And this is where the research on inflammatory memory becomes so important. If we can find ways to target this memory directly, right. we could potentially prevent those recurring flare-ups and achieve long-term remission. That would be incredible. But how would we even go about targeting something like inflammatory memory? Like, what kind of treatments are we talking about here? That's where things get really exciting. Some researchers are exploring what we call epigenetic therapies. Uh -huh. These are drugs or other interventions that can modify those epigenetic marks on our DNA. You know, the ones we talked about earlier. Right, right. So instead of just suppressing the immune response, yeah. we could potentially rewrite the instructions that are causing those cells to overreact in the first place. Exactly. It's a much more targeted approach yeah. and potentially less invasive than, you know, traditional immunosuppressant medications. I know it's still early days, but are there like any promising treatments in development right now? There are some fascinating avenues being explored. For example, researchers are looking at drugs that inhibit the enzymes responsible for adding those epigenetic sticky notes to our DNA. So basically blocking the process that creates the inflammatory memory in the first place. Precisely. Other researchers are investigating ways to directly modify the activity of certain genes. Wow. Essentially rewiring those cells to be less reactive to inflammatory triggers. It sounds almost like science fiction, but it's incredible to think that we might be on the cusp of being able to like, change the way our cells behave at such a fundamental level. It's, yeah, it's a testament to the power of scientific discovery. And as our understanding of inflammatory memory, you know, deepens, we're likely to see even more innovative and targeted treatments emerge in the coming years. It's amazing to consider the potential for these new therapies to transform how we approach a wide range of chronic conditions. Mm. But even with these advancements on the horizon, are there things we can do now to help mitigate the effects of inflammatory memory? That's a great question. Um, while we can't 
you know, erase the past, right. we can definitely take steps to support our overall health and potentially reduce the impact of inflammation. What would you recommend? Well, as cliche as it might sound, a healthy lifestyle is crucial. You know, that means eating a balanced diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, yeah. getting regular exercise, and prioritizing sleep. So all the things our mothers have been telling us to do our whole lives. Exactly. But there's there's good reason for those recommendations. These healthy habits help keep inflammation in check and promote overall well-being. And don't underestimate the power of managing stress. You're right. Chronic stress can really like fuel inflammation throughout <laughs> the body. It's like adding fuel to the fire. So finding healthy ways to manage stress, whether it's through mindfulness, yoga, spending time in nature, or whatever works for you, yeah. can be incredibly beneficial. So it's yep. a holistic approach, taking care of both our physical and mental health to help minimize those inflammatory triggers. Absolutely. And, and remember, even small changes can make a big difference over time. It's about building healthy habits that support your body's natural resilience. I'm curious about something else Professor Mangi touched on in the video. Mm -hmm. She talked about how the location of inflammation can actually play a role in how the body remembers it. Ah, yes. The, the concept of positional memory. Yes. It's fascinating, isn't it? It is. She used the example of psoriasis where those lesions often reappear in the exact same spots even after the initial inflammation is cleared. Yeah. Like the skin has a map of past inflammation and uses that map to guide future responses. Yeah, it's almost as if the skin keeps a record of those inflammatory hotspots, you know, right. and reacts more quickly in those areas the next time around. That's a great way to put it. And this concept of positional memory isn't limited to the skin. Uh, researchers have found evidence of it in other organs as well, such as the lungs and the gut. So, for example, if someone had pneumonia in a particular part of their lung, they might be more susceptible to developing lung infections in that same area in the future. Exactly. And in the gut, if someone had a bout of inflammatory bowel disease in a specific region of their intestine, they might be more prone to experiencing flare-ups in that same location later on. Wow. It's a reminder that our bodies have a remarkable ability to remember past experiences, both good and bad. Yeah. And this memory can shape our health in really profound ways. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what are some practical takeaways our listener can glean from all this information about inflammatory memory? Well, I think the most important takeaway is that inflammation is not something to be taken lightly. You know, it's not just a temporary inconvenience. It's a process that can have long-lasting effects on our bodies. So we need to be proactive about reducing inflammation and protecting our health. Absolutely. That means adopting a healthy lifestyle, managing stress, and minimizing our exposure to environmental toxins and other, you know, potential triggers of inflammation. And if we do experience inflammation, it's important to seek appropriate medical care and address the underlying cause rather than just masking the symptoms. Exactly. By understanding the complex interplay between inflammation and memory, we can take steps to prevent chronic diseases and live healthier, more vibrant lives. This deep dive has been an incredible journey into the fascinating world of inflammatory memory. We've learned so much about how our bodies remember past inflammation, the potential consequences of this memory, and the exciting new research that could lead to revolutionary treatments. It's been a pleasure exploring this topic with you, and I hope our listeners found it as insightful and thought-provoking as we have. Before we sign off, I want to leave our listener with one final thought to ponder. We've talked a lot about how inflammatory memory can contribute to chronic diseases and other health problems, but could there be a flip side to this coin? Could inflammatory memory also have beneficial effects in certain situations? That's an intriguing question. Could it be that this memory also primes our defenses, helping our bodies mount a faster, more effective immune response if we encounter a pathogen we've encountered before? Like our body has learned from past battles and is better prepared for future encounters. Precisely. There's definitely evidence suggesting that certain types of immune memory can protect us from future infections. So maybe inflammatory memory isn't always a bad thing. It might be a double-edged sword capable of both harm and protection. That's a great way to put it. It's a reminder that our bodies are incredibly complex and adaptable, constantly evolving in response to our experiences. Professor Mungi's lecture really opened my eyes to this intricate world of inflammation and its long-term consequences. It's clear that there's still so much to learn, but the research into inflammatory memory is incredibly promising. It's an exciting frontier in medical science, and I have no doubt that future discoveries will revolutionize how we understand and treat a wide range of diseases. So as we wrap up this deep dive into inflammatory memory, we encourage you to stay curious, 
Stay informed and stay engaged with your health. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep asking questions. That's it for today's deep dive. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to diving into another fascinating topic with you soon.